Fatigue is a very common complaint in clinical practice. Is fatigue destroying your quality of life? Is it preventing you from being the person you want to be and the spouse or parent you want to be or the athlete you want to be? I'm Dr. John Bartimus and I'm putting the pieces together to help you live a life at optimal. Fatigue is a nonspecific symptom. What that means is that there are multiple potential contributing factors to your fatigue and the complaint of fatigue does not tell the doctor what the cause is or which system is involved. So when someone complains of fatigue, especially chronic fatigue, then there's a lot of detective work that needs to be done to determine what system or systems or lifestyle inputs are causing the fatigue. So today I want to run through a long list of them. The first thing we want to consider are lifestyle inputs. For example, does the person eat enough? Caloric restriction will lead to fatigue. If you're not eating enough calories, you don't have enough fuel to perform and therefore you'll be fatigued because you'll have to burn through stores in order to perform or in order to keep going and so you're actually expending energy in order to perform versus consuming enough calories taking in calories providing energy to perform another lifestyle input that contributes to fatigue is sleep do you get enough sleep in terms of hours are you sleeping during the right times is your circadian rhythm healthy are your sleep-wake cycles aligned with the light-dark cycles? All of these things matter and all of these things can contribute to fatigue. Another lifestyle factor that could contribute is blood sugar regulation or diet. So what you're choosing to eat determines in large part your blood sugar uh, regulation and if you have high blood sugar or low blood sugar those are definitely going to impact your energy levels and your ability to perform over the short and the long term. Another lifestyle factor is training. Are you overtraining? If you're overtraining, that can lead to fatigue and injury. If you're undertraining or too sedentary, that can lead to fatigue and injury if you take up training. The another factor you want to look at is oxygenation and circulation. If someone's anemic, they're going to be fatigued because they're not delivering oxygen to the tissues. Oxygen becomes ATP or energy for the tissues. So your ability to oxygenate the tissues will contribute to your fatigue or energy status. Circulation goes hand in hand with that. Because oxygen is carried by your red blood cells, if you have poor circulation or any sort of cardiovascular issue or lung issue, then your ability to deliver oxygen to the tissues suffers and fatigue results. Thyroid status contributes to fatigue or energy levels. If you have any sort of thyroid dysfunction, that can result in fatigue. Thyroid sets the metabolic rate of every cell in the body. So if your thyroid's dinged, there's potential for all kinds of symptoms. And just seeing a TSH and a free T4 does not tell you if your thyroid's good or bad. You need to look thoroughly at the thyroid. Hormone dysfunction can contribute to fatigue, whether we're talking sex hormones or cortisol and insulin. So lay people are very familiar with the term adrenal fatigue. I prefer HPA axis maladaptation, but that's another video. But we know that if your adrenals are quote unquote fatigued, cortisol is, is a part of that stress is a part of that. So a huge lifestyle factor in fatigue is stress levels. So you need to monitor those. Another thing we want to look at are nutrient deficiencies. Are you deficient in certain nutrients like magnesium, coenzyme Q10, multiple B vitamins? All of these things can contribute to fatigue if they are deficient and piggybacking on deficiencies in those vitamins do you have genetic mutations in the, in the genes that code uh, for energetic processes metabolically? If you have certain genetic mutations, you may be inefficient at metabolic processes that lead to energy production. And gut 
If you have gut dysfunction, you may have malabsorption. If you have malabsorption, you're not getting the nutrients and energy from the food you're consuming. So you could have the best organic non-GMO diet in the world, but all you have is expensive feces if you have malabsorption. And then autoimmune disease or any chronic inflammatory disease. The immune system is very energetically expensive. So if you're chronically um, activating the immune system or it's chronically fighting something, that's going to fatigue you. And piggybacking on that, chronic infection can cause fatigue. So can acute infection. So Epstein-Barr infection, which is what causes mono, can lead to fatigue. Um, there's multiple viruses and bacterial infections that can lead to fatigue and chronic fatigue. So infectious status is a huge one. Lastly today, we'll talk about neurodegeneration. Neurodegeneration or brain degeneration is a cause of fatigue and fatigue is one of the earliest symptoms of neurodegenerative processes. So depending on age and other history factors, you want to look at neurodegeneration as a possible driver of your fatigue. So as you can see, there is a whole laundry list of possible factors driving fatigue. So just going into your doctor and saying I'm tired and then giving you a prescription probably is bad medicine, especially if they've done nothing for exam or lab because there's this whole list of things that you need to rule in or rule out in order to address the fatigue properly.